Its age? An amazing 4,000 million years. Dating rocks like Sam's opens up ever greater depths of time. But it still doesn't answer that fundamental question. Just how old is Earth? The trouble is, how do you know when you found the oldest rock on Earth? And even after you find it, how do you know that it was formed at the same time as the Earth? Well, quite frankly, you don't. The answer lies in something else, something that was formed millions of miles away. I'd like to buy this rock, please. All right. Here's 20. OK, that'll be 85 cents. Mm -hmm. Compared to the other rocks in the shop, this rock looks pretty ordinary. But this rock represents a landmark in our understanding of time. It comes from outer space. My rock is a fragment from a giant meteor that left this. The Behringer Meteor Crater in Arizona. Three hundred thousand tons of rock from space collided with Earth and blew the ground apart. The meteor was so huge, it ripped house-sized boulders from the ground. Try to imagine a few of these flying through the air. My fragment is part of that meteor. It's debris from the very birth of our solar system. When the solar system first formed, it was full of rock and debris, out of which the planets and the Earth condensed. However, there were some bits and pieces of rock that did not condense. And those leftover rocks remain, primitive relics from the birth of the planets. That's the origin of the meteorites. They share a common age and common origin with the Earth. So if you know the date of this rock, then you know the age of the Earth. In 1955, using radioactive dating on this very meteor, scientists at last revealed the Earth's true age. The search that had started with Usher and Hutton was over. I imagine that if James Hutton were still alive today, he'd be quite pleased with himself. He set off on a journey 200 years ago that he could never complete. He talked about a vestige of a beginning that he would never see. Well, today, by looking at rocks, not from Scotland, but from outer space, we can nail that number right to the wall. Since 1955, all ways to date the Earth have agreed. The Earth is 4,600 million years old. That's 4.6 billion years. Earth time is unimaginably vast. It's amazing that in just a few centuries, our view of the depths of Earth time has changed so radically and has completely changed our conception of who we are. How are we to comprehend this vast ocean of time? And if we begin to understand the immensity of Earth time, what does that mean for our sense of our place within it? Let's say that one millimeter represents one year backwards in time. Here we are in the present. This is me in the 21st century. Now, if I go back 5.8 centimeters, then we reach 1947. That's the year I was born. Now, let's talk about the Roman conquest of England. That took place in the year 43 AD. For that, 
we had to go back about 195 centimeters to about here. Even the length of my table represents 2,000 years. But I want to measure out the whole of Earth time. And 4.6 billion years is going to take me a whole lot further. On this scale, every mile is an epoch of nearly two million years. As the sheer depths of Earth time roll on, a human lifespan seems so insignificant. traveled two and a half thousand miles, 4.6 billion years of time, the entire age of the Earth. It's taken me across the whole of America, and it's made me feel, by comparison, very, very small indeed. Compared to my own 58 years, that's how vast Earth time really is. My own lifespan is nothing but a pimple on the face of Earth time. That's what makes 4.6 billion years so captivating, but also so unnerving. You see, time means change. Everything changes with time. The world we see around us that seems so solid and so permanent is literally changing right beneath our own feet. Our Earth is constantly changing, but it happens so slowly that we're simply not around long enough to witness it. This beach, for example, took millions of years to form. You see, we can only see the effects of time through change. And change over millions of years is almost imperceptible. There are, however, some places where occasionally we're able to glimpse these changes in action. Kalapana, 1990. This Hawaiian fishing village faced total devastation from the most active volcano in the world. Kilauea. It's a 90-foot wall of hot, molten lava rolling toward your home. And people just stood there, basically, in total disbelief. And before that lava would hit the home, homes would just burst into flame. And people would cry and, uh, you know, traumatized to the max, you know. Hot lava buried house after house. Robert Kalihihohomalu lived on the edge of town. He could only watch as the lava approached. This is where my wife was standing. And while she was here watching the lava coming, it stopped in the front of her and started to build up. So you can see here where the truck is parked. This is the end of the lava. Stop right here. 